so I'm the co-founder and CTO of Kick. Uh, so I'm a CTOE type person. I tend to approach things from a technology and a product standpoint. I'm still learning some of the uh, advertising lingo, so I hope you guys won't hold it against me if I'm looking at things from sort of uh, the user's perspective. Uh, Kick is a chat platform that's insanely popular among young people in the US, or as I think I heard them called yesterday, millennials. Is that, is that the right term? Yeah. All right. Yeah. See, I'm learning already. Unlike many of Kick's users, I'm actually old enough to remember when this was the main way that advertisers talked to me. TV was a very passive medium. There was sort of this box that sat in your living room and entertained you. And so it made sense that advertising was a very passive experience in that era. When the desktop internet came along, that changed a lot. I didn't watch the internet, I browsed it. I was choosing what I would see. And so it makes sense that the kinds of advertising that worked were the kinds that I wanted to engage with. Things like banner ads that got in my way performed sort of underwhelmingly. But things like you know, search that fit in with the way that I was browsing the internet were exceptional and worked really well. In the age of social media, the same principle held true. The kinds of advertising that worked well were the kinds that fit in. We called it native advertising. You know, advertising that fit into my feed and played well with the way that I was consuming this new class of media. But just as we were sort of starting to become comfortable with advertising on the desktop internet, things changed. The smartphone happened. It's kind of hard to believe now that this was actually the first smartphone. Uh, I put it up here sort of as a little mini shout out to Waterloo where Kick is from. Uh, but the thing to realize about the smartphone, it's something that I've actually heard talked about here a lot, is that it is a qualitatively different class of device. A smartphone is always on, it's always connected, and it's always with you. And what that means is it's much less like an appliance that you use, like a TV or a computer. And it's much more like a part of yourself. A smartphone is, is an extension of you. And it, what it powers is a human network, not a network of TVs, not a network of computers, a network of people. The example that I always love to give to sort of illustrate this is, think about the last time you left home without your phone in your pocket. How long did it take you to realize that you were missing it? If you're anything like me, it was less than 30 seconds. You realized you were missing your phone sooner than you would have realized that you were missing your keys or that you forgot to put on pants that day. So when the touchscreen phone came along, it's not surprising that things didn't work the same way. Some things that worked in the desktop era didn't translate to this new class of device. We we're going to have to reinvent how things worked. Flash forward to today, and we're half a decade into the smartphone revolution. And we've been inventing services that take all of the things that this, this network of people enables and figuring out like, what, what, that, what, that, what that enables now, what new things we can come up with that's different than what came before and how it works. You know, from Instagram to Uber, there's a whole class of things that, that are possible today that never were before. And I'm going to talk today about one of those class of things that's particularly close to my heart at Kick, and that's messaging. So what is, what is messaging and why is it important? Messaging actually has its roots uh, before even the smartphone, back in the feature phone age, when people sort of thought that the phone was a device for making phone calls. Uh, it turns out that's one of those things that didn't really translate. But SMS, the simple form of text messaging, absolutely took off. And to this day, messaging is one of the main things that people do on their phones. It's one of the most engaging, most compelling ways that people connect in this new 
sort of people network. And why is that? I think the most important reason is because messaging puts you in control. When you send me a text message, I can choose to read it now or I can choose to read it later. I can choose when I want to reply. And when this device is a part of me, it's something that's always with me, that control is incredibly important. And the features that have been added to chat apps sort of since SMS are all things that sort of enhance this. Things like read receipts and typing notifications mean that when you send me a message, I can choose to, choose to read it, choose to start typing back, and you can see that, and we can upgrade to this really synchronous, real-time, intimate experience, but I'm always in control. I never have to do that. You can never really demand my attention. And I think that more than any of the other flashy things like video or emoji or the million other great things we can put into messengers, that control is what makes it a powerful force in this new medium. So who are we? Uh, Kick is a chat platform, as I said, that's insanely popular with young people in the US. We have 200 million registered users globally. But more importantly for me, uh, for people in the US that are aged 13 to 24, 40% of them are active on Kick. So we have a pretty strong user base. Mary Meeker said last week that messaging apps will evolve into global communications hubs. Whoops. Doesn't matter. Um, I take that to mean you know, it, messaging apps will grow beyond just a way to connect and become more and more an important way to connect to the other things that we care about in this new era of mobile. And in order to sort of understand what that means, we should first look at what's going on in Asia right now. Three of the most advanced chat platforms in the world exist in Asia right now. Kakao Talk in Korea, Line in Japan, and in particular WeChat in China have all started out as a chat app, as a way to connect in mobile, but grown into these powerful commercial empires where people can do so much more. WeChat has this, co this concept of official accounts, which is an account that you can talk to in the messenger like you would a friend. You know, you choose to talk to them, you can send it a message, but instead of just being another person, it can be a brand or a service or something else that you want to interact with. That means that you can order a taxi on WeChat, you can buy health insurance on WeChat, you can apply to refinance your mortgage on WeChat. They've been taking more and more things that you want to be able to do from your phone and putting it into this, into this format of the official account. And it works so well because the experience makes sense. The experience is great in mobile. You know, you're in control. It works natively the way that you'd expect in chat. I get to choose to talk to it. I get to have a real conversation with it. So let's take a look at, at sort of more concretely what that can look like. And I'll walk you through a couple of uh, promoted chats, which is the feature on Kick that we've added that sort of builds off of what we've learned in Asia. And it's the, same, it's the same basic principle. I can talk to a brand or a service or, or something else in my messenger that I want to do beyond just, just connecting with my friends. Insidious 3 was a, was a big Hollywood movie that launched sometime in the past week. And they wanted to reach out and connect with an audience of young people in the US and get them excited about the movie, get them into it, get them thinking about it, talking about it, and ultimately to go to the theater and watch it. And what they did was they put a promoted chat on Kick for Quinn Brenner, who's one of the characters from the movie. So you could send a message to Quinn Brenner as if she were your friend, and she would talk to you back and forth as she went through this sort of terrifying experience that she was having in the events leading up to the movie. She was finding sort of demons in her room, and, and nobody would believe her, and she would ask you for advice on what should she do. You know, could she go to the police? Would they believe her? And there were parts of the story where it would actually force you to take a break. She would say, hey, I can't get back to you right now. You know, I'm going to go check upstairs in an hour, and I'll tell you what I find. 
And <laughs> for me personally, I got one of those follow-up messages at two in the morning one day uh, saying that she'd found this sort of like weird faceless thing in her room. And I know how all of this stuff works. I know that I'm talking to a, to a machine, to a promoted chat, but it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I did not sleep very well that night. And I think that's a testament to how visceral this kind of experience can be, how real it can feel. Another cool example is what the Washington Post has done. Uh, they recently launched a road trip that you could take around the United States through Chad. So you would tell it where you wanted to go, and it would send you beautiful pictures of that destination. And then it would ask you sort of, where do you want to go next? It was this beautiful, simple experience, but it was so compelling because I felt like I was driving. So we launched Promoted Chats last August, and so far the results have been really exciting. Uh, we've got over 70 brands on the platform. There's been more than 350 million messages exchanged. And uh, most excitingly, there's been over 15 million Kik users who have opted in to chat with one of these things. That means they, they saw it, they wanted to engage, and they sent the first message. They started a conversation, and that's insanely exciting. And we're just getting started. We've long had this myth that a brand is kind of like a person, right? A brand can have a character. It can have a voice. It's something that you can have a relationship with. That's sort of how we want to think about brands, and it's always been this the sort of guiding idea. But for the first time in chat, that myth can become a reality. I can literally talk to a brand. I can hear its voice. I can see the relationship I have with it in my conversation list. That, I think, is the future of advertising. It's personal, it's engaging, and users like it. They like it. And so I think it's worth paying attention. Thanks. Uh, we have a couple minutes. Does anyone have any questions for Chris? We've got two mics floating around. I'm super under time. You guys have to ask questions. Broaden your reach a little bit, like, or do you have to opt in to interact with the brand? Is there a way to like find the audience versus interact so, with the? So critically, users always have to opt in to to a promoted chat. They have to send the first message because we think that sort of makes it a, a more compelling experience. I'm choosing to interact with it. Uh, that said, we have we've put in a number of ways in the platform uh, to make them more discoverable. So you can you can get promotion in sort of the flow in Kick where people go to find friends when they're looking for something to do, maybe they're bored, they're looking for something to talk to, there can be a suggestion, hey, you know, maybe you want to talk to Burger King. And then if they go in and they choose that, Burger King knows that they've sort of like got somebody that actually wants to talk to them that's actually engaged. So although the user always has to opt in, there are ways to sort of promote more discovery, to reach people, to let people find you who might otherwise not have. Does that answer your question? What do you know about the, uh, the users such that there are certain brands probably that are slam dunks to get on, this, on your platform today, and there's probably some brands that would really struggle on your platform today. So can you sort of describe those brands that are the slam dunks and, and who should be come running to you after this uh, session? Uh -huh. So I think the, the, the brands that are the biggest slam dunks are the ones that want to reach the audience that Kick has. So people that, for whatever reason, want to, want to talk to young people in the US and for whom that, and, and who will be compelling to that audience. Uh, so I think that's sort of like the, the best use case on Kick specifically right now. That said, there's also just like a ton of, of learning to be had out of like, how do we do advertising in chat? And so I think there's also a lot of, a lot of value to be gained just in sort of like, being on the platform and learning with us, like what actually works in this medium, like how do you make a compelling promoted chat? Um, so I would say very much everybody that wants to talk to young people, but everybody in general should come running to us because it's great. Chris, 
to compare uh, Kik's effectiveness or messaging's effectiveness versus some of the other channels, whether those be within mobile, either on a brand basis or sales basis? What, what data do we have yet around that? Um, we've got a bit of data and we're working on getting more. The biggest data we have right now is with sort of like click-through rates and engagement. So we've been able to compare uh, click-through rates when a brand that I've opted into talking to sends me a message, say, to a link or to some sort of material, um, compared to like maybe tweeting the same material and having a follower click on it. And we're finding the click-through rates are sort of like in excess of 10 times higher uh, because there's sort of that much more intimate relationship and the user feels like they've asked for this, right? If I, have, as a user, send a message to a, to a promoted chat and it replies with a link, the chances that I'm willing to engage with that are way, way higher. Uh, so that's the best benchmark we have right now. Um, what is the process of creating this um, conversation? I mean, do you sit down and write thousands of pages of copy? Sorry, right over here. Do you write thousands of pages of copy and then just load it into your proto chat and then just let it run? Or are you optimizing on a daily basis saying, well, you know, that kind of response didn't work let's try something like this, or let's try something, because I'm assuming you don't really know what's gonna happen, or you don't know how kids are gonna interact with the, or you don't know what questions they're gonna ask. Yeah, we, we definitely optimize it in an ongoing basis. Um, you know, to some extent we are learning sort of what some of the basic things that people ask are. You know, we will set a brand up with uh, a bunch of categories of keywords of things that we, that we know they're likely to be asked. Uh, but beyond that, there's very much an iterative process of you look at what people are actually saying, you look at the conversations that are playing out, and you're like, gee, I wish, I wish if we'd said this here, that would have really like, hit, the, hit the message we want to deliver. And you can, you can sort of iterate and add to it really easily at any time. You can, you can update it on the fly. And that's what we're seeing the mo most people doing, especially the very successful people are sort of, as you say, reacting to what's being said to them and, and figuring out what, what the compelling content is. And it's not, even in, the, even in the extreme cases, it's not really thousands of pages of copy. Um, even something like the Quinn Brenner thing, the whole story, if you get all the way through, it was about 80 messages. So to cover all the branches, you probably needed four or five times that much. But that was sort of like, and that's the most sort of balls to the wall, in-depth experience we've done. So it's not, it's not that huge of an investment of copy. Um, one, one quick question, how does a brand get a kid to message them in the first place? Um, so they, they show up in one of a couple places in the app. So they'll either show up in the promoted chat section, or we have a way that they can pay for more discovery to show up in more prominent places. Um, so really, it's, it's they, have to, they have to convince them to talk to them in some way, either by going out of band, and we'll see a lot of people like post to their Twitter, hey, we're on Kick now, go talk to us, or hey, if you want to have this cool experience in whatever other medium, talk to us on Kick or they can promote within the app, which again, just sort of puts, puts, their, puts their name and tagline in the user flow, and then users can, if they, if they like that, if they think that's interesting, they'll click in and talk to it. So, so it is all opt-in. The brand can't send just a message. The brand can never message you unless you message it first, and that's super critical to how all this works. Awesome. All right, thanks a lot, everybody.